Hello, I'm Abhishek Agnihotri and I'm an Advanced Endoscopy Fellow at Thomas Jefferson University Hospital. The article I'm discussing is titled EUS Imaging for the Diagnosis of Non-Alcoholic Fatty Liver Disease and was recently published in Gastrointestinal Endoscopy. The first author is Dr. Andy Silva Santisteban and the senior author is Dr. Mandeep Sani from Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston. With the rise in obesity and type 2 diabetes, NAFLD or MAFLD has become the most common cause of chronic liver disease in the U.S. and is expected to continue to contribute significantly to the burden of chronic liver disease in the future. Early diagnosis is crucial for timely intervention. Most patients are diagnosed incidentally when they are noted to have abnormal liver enzymes or when hepatic steatosis is noted on imaging studies with transabdominal ultrasound, a common imaging study to make diagnosis. At present, there exists no validated criteria to describe hepatic steatosis on endoscopic ultrasound. Excellent views of the liver are obtained during EUS. With the emergence of EUS-guided liver biopsy and portal pressure measurement, there is increasing interest among endosonographers to assess the liver during EUS. The goal of our study is to assess accuracy of EUS for diagnosis of hepatic steatosis. This was a retrospective study. We included patients at a single tertiary care center who underwent EUS-guided liver biopsy. Digitally stored EUS images were extracted and evaluated by a single expert radiologist who was blinded to patient identifiers. Degree of steatosis was graded on a standardized four-point scale described for transabdominal ultrasound with grade zero being normal and grade three being severe steatosis. We dichotomized the severity of liver steatosis as normal or mild being grades zero and one and moderate to severe being grades two and three. The degree of hepatic steatosis on liver biopsies was graded as follows. Grade zero being normal with less than 5% fat content to grade 3 being severe with more than 66% fat content. Similarly, degree of inflammation and fibrosis were also graded using existing standardized pathological criteria. We evaluate the overall accuracy of EUS for diagnosis of hepatic steatosis for all patients and subgroup accuracies for obese and non-obese patients with receiver operating characteristic curves. A total of 76 patients underwent EUS-guided liver biopsy. The average age of the study patients was 56.5 years. The patients were equally divided among male and female genders. Almost half patients in the study were obese with BMI more than 30. The most common indication for liver biopsy was abnormal liver enzymes. A mean of three EUS images were assessed per patient to rate steatosis. Any degree of steatosis on liver biopsy was used as reference standard. The overall accuracy for EUS for diagnosis of hepatic steatosis using area under the curve was 0.8 with 95% confidence intervals being 0.7 to 0.89. The sensitivity of EUS was 91.5%, specificity was 31.03%, positive predictive value was 68.25%, and negative predictive value was 69.23%. The accuracy of EUS for diagnosis of hepatic steatosis in obese patients using area under the curve was 0.93, with 95% confidence intervals being 0.8 to 0.99. The sensitivity of EUS was 96.3%, specificity was 50%, positive predictive value was 89.7%, and negative predictive value was 75%. In a postdoc analysis, we assessed the diagnostic accuracy of EUS when only moderate to severe steatosis in obese and non-obese patients separately. The overall positive predictive value for diagnosis of moderate to severe hepatic steatosis was 93% and for obese patients was 100%. We also assessed coarse liver echo texture noted on EUS imaging for diagnosis of bridging fibrosis of cirrhosis being stage 3 or 4 fibrosis on biopsies. The accuracy of this finding was 78%. To our knowledge, this is the first study to validate criteria for describing hepatic steatosis, and we found EUS to be highly accurate in diagnosis of hepatic steatosis. The overall accuracy of EUS did not diminish with BMI, as is the case described in literature with transabdominal ultrasound. 
and in fact it was higher in patients who were obese on EUS. Pancreatic obliterary EUS is performed for a variety of indications and left lobe of liver is frequently and easily visualized. We propose that existing criteria can be used to describe degree of hepatic steatosis on EUS, which may lead to an early diagnosis for some patients. It is important to note that the study included archived still images and accuracy may be higher in real-time imaging of the liver. This was also a single center study with one expert radiologist and larger studies are needed to reproduce and validate these findings. Thank you.